طيب أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا جميعا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد على آله وصحبه أجمعين Yes, my my voice is working because I can hear it on the YouTube. Uh, I can hear it on the YouTube uh, stream. Time. Let me just quickly share that link in the channel and then we'll start. Bismillah. طيب first thing we're going to start with is we're going to do a quick recap of uh, last week's lesson inshallah ta'ala um, and we're going to do that by posing some questions inshallah okay so let me quickly share the screen so we were on alhamdulillah we were doing the uh, unit 2 family and last week we've uh, done the life class number three i've assigned some midweek assignments that most of you had a go at alhamdulillah which i'm going to mark inshallah tomorrow and today inshallah ta'ala we're on life class four and the first thing we're going to start with is last week's recap and obviously we're going to be utilizing wooklab for that okay so let me send you the link to wooklab and then all of you can join us. Um, this is lecture four. The link, you'll find it in the chat. Okay. If anybody asks for the link, please make sure you just any of you can uh, repost, inshallah. Okay. Uh, the voice is really low. Is that the case, or is that just for some of you? I am using the right, correct microphone. Does anyone else feel like the voice is low? It's not low for me. Okay, so I suppose that's on your side then. Okay. Taib. Uh, continuing then. Everybody join the clap, inshallah. Uh, so the week clap, the, 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 the recap, we're going to do it by way of uh, asking some questions. Okay. Uh, the first question would be, what are the three verb types? So we talked about verb, type, verb types last time. And I want you to tell me what the three verb types are. Okay. If you can remember them, you can write them in English and Arabic, it's up to you. So every single verb in the Arabic language is either one of three types. There is no fourth. Okay, past, present, future. No, that's not correct. Mali mudari amr. Yes, that's correct. So it's not past, present, future. If you're going to say it in English, then usually it would be past, present, and command tense, or which they call imperative mood. Okay, so the future is not a separate type. The future tense in the Arabic language, we just, we just add something to it. Okay, all right. So the f three verb types. We categorize them according to these types because every verb type has its own structure. And we deal with it in a certain way when we add the pronoun. Okay? So please remember that. Future tense in Arabic doesn't it's not really a separate verb type. Okay, what does a verb have to have? So you can't have a verb without this thing. Okay, a verb cannot exist without this. What would that be? Okay. Some of you said noun. One of you said fa'il, which is correct. 
a noun, yes, a type of noun. What type of noun? The noun called fa'il. In English, it's called subject, and it's also called doer sometimes. Okay, the verbs object, subject, or if we look at the meaning, not necessarily grammar-wise, it's the doer, the person who did the action. Uh, fa'il. Okay, fi'l fa'il maf'ulun bihi. No, maf'ulun bihi is not a must. Maf'ulun bihi is optional, depending on the fi'l itself. Okay, so no. The two things that are a must that a verb has to have is the verb and the fa'il okay and i was going to talk about basic arabic sentences and their structures but i will come to that later that there is an issue there but um bihi is not an essential part of the fi'il unless the fi'il itself needs a bihi but not all fi'ils do we'll talk about that another time now i want you to define nouns define them in a way that it stands out from the other three categories okay nouns as in asma i wrote nouns which is probably um inaccurate i'm better off saying uh, uh, define and i'm gonna write it in arabic al ism okay which would translate to as noun define al ism Okay, what do we have? Proper or common name of a person, place or thing. Okay. Uh, name refers to a person, animal, place, abstract, ID or thing. Okay. There's one thing about the name that you haven't mentioned. A really important part. What makes a, a, a sorry, it's a really important part of ism that you haven't mentioned. What makes an ism different from a verb? What's the main thing that makes it different? Apart from the fact that it names. So a noun is taken from naming something. And we don't just say it names, it also refers. So it doesn't have to name it. If I say huwa, I haven't named him. If I say huwa mudarris, I haven't named him. But I refer to an individual which has been named before. Naam, ahsent. It has a meaning in and of itself and it does not denote time. That's the most important part. Okay? Nouns are not connected to time by themselves. So if I say to you, for example, Ahmed, Kitab, okay, Batta, whatever, you can't tell me when. If I say to you, Qalam, and then I say to you when, you can't give me an answer. Because there is no time connected to a noun. And um, it has a meaning of itself that is in opposition to harf. Harfs don't have that. Okay, so I kind of like gave away the other two questions, but nevertheless, I'm still going to answer, ask it. Divine, the define, sorry, what a fi'l is. So let's call it fi'l instead of verb. Even though fi'l is one and verb are one of the things that are kind of like direct translations. They're kind of like uh, synonymous in both languages, even though nouns might be a bit different in Arabic than in English, but fi'l is not the case. Fi'l number one conveys an action. Absolutely, that's the important thing. It tells you something happened. Or is happening or will happen in the future. So two things about it. The happening of something and the tense. So any, in order for anything to happen, it needs to take place in the container of time. No action can take place without it being contained within a specific time period. Okay? I'm talking about us humans, obviously. Our actions are contained by time. Okay? They take place at a certain time and a certain place. Okay? So when it comes to verbs... It has to tell you when it happened. So if I say to you, for example, shariba, okay, drank. In Arabic, you automatically know it happened in the past. Shariba, he drank, okay? Because it has to have that meaning, the verb itself, okay? But if I said to you in English, drank or a drink, you're going to be like, what? When did it happen? Um, finally, the fine particles. And like I said to you last time, it's really important that you differentiate between these three things. Uh, particles which are called huruf, we'll call it harf. It's really important because your understanding of the language depends on it. Because every single one of these three types of speech, they have their own characteristics, they have their own meanings, they have their own way, their own function within a sentence grammatically. So if you mix up between a verb and a noun, you're going to go completely wrong. 
Number one, you want to understand the structure of the sentence. You don't understand what's being talked about. You want to understand when it's taking place and you'll be completely lost. Okay? If I say to, for example, هذا Yazid. Okay, Yazid is kind of like ambiguous. It could be a noun and it could be a verb. Yes, but it's also used as a name, Yazid, which also means increase. Okay, so if you, if I say to هذا Yazid, if you don't know that what I mean by it is the noun, and obviously you would know from context, I'll be pointing at someone, I'll be like, هذا Yazid. Um, then you'd think, what's increasing? Okay, because you don't know if it's a noun or a verb. Um, so we have particles or huruf, what are they? It has no meaning in and of itself. It requires a verb or a noun to understand the meaning, yes. So it takes on the meaning depending on the context it's in. So it, every single harf, if you like, can have a multitude of meanings. So huruf you can't really translate, to be honest, okay? So they add meaning to a verb or a noun, okay? Uh, mumtaz. And obviously they're not connected to time and they don't refer to an, an entity or they don't refer to a specific person or place or thing or animal. They don't refer to it. If I say to you, for example, ala, on top of, okay? That has no meaning in of itself, ala. It doesn't refer to a person. It doesn't tell you something that has happened. It's just, ala, what are you talking about? Okay? Tayyib, tayyib, um, Okay, now we're going to go and I'm going to ask a few questions with the, with, uh, that relate to using interrogative words. Okay, so we've done quite a few interrogative words and I've got quite a few questions here. Okay, and each question I'm going to pose and you're going to have like 30 seconds to answer. Okay. You can write it in English or Arabic, I don't mind. Um, but the question basically is, this is the first question, which adat is tifham? Which adat is tifham? Which interrogative word would you use if you want to know about someone? So which word would you use from the interrogative words? Actually, wait, 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 hold on. I'm going to moderate this one so that you can't see each other's answers until I reveal them you can also like each other's answers if you think it's a good answer and I'm also going to limit it to 30 seconds I might increase it if I feel like it okay right. go ahead which adat istifham would you use if you want to know about someone Okay, allow all of you to answer before I reveal the answer over here. I don't want you to copy each other. Okay. Pay close attention eh, to the question. So you got a few more seconds. 12 people answered, 13 of you. There we go. Okay, so we have men. Hasant, mashallah. Men hada. Who? Ka, no, ka is wrong. Ka is not an interrogative word. And I don't want you to use English words. Please, don't write who. That's common sense. We're not doing English class, okay? I want you to either say the word, write the word in Arabic, or write it in English, but it has to be an Arabic word, okay? Um, so yeah, who, men. Correct. Okay. Next one. Next one. Um, what word, interrogative word, would you use if you want to know about something? Okay, you want to know about something. Okay, mashallah, I'm getting many more answers now coming in within the 30 seconds. Seems like everyone's starting to get the hang of it. Mumtaz. Um, yeah, don't write in the chat. I think you should join WooClap because I don't want people to be copying each other. If you join WooClub, it would be better. Okay. Okay, time's up. We have ma. Yes, ma. Ma hadha. Okay, you can say ma hadha. You can also say ma. It doesn't have to be ma hadha. When you say ma jinsiyatuk, you're not saying ma hadha jinsiyatuk. So when you say ma hadha, now number one, you're not sticking to just an interrogative word. Because ma hadha is two words. You have ma, you have the demonstrative pronoun. So ma hadha would be wrong. Okay. The correct answer would be ma. Or, like somebody put mada as well, but we haven't done that one yet. Okay? Okay, Mumtaz. Another one. 
So far, so good, mashallah. Allahumma barik. Okay, what interrogative word would you use if you want to know about someone's whereabouts? Okay, all of these questions, the way they're structured is, I'm putting you in a scenario. You want to know where someone is, what would you use? And I've kind of like started to feel that 30 seconds is too long. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, for those of you that are writing Arabic, that's why you're getting a bit of extra time. Okay. So the correct answer would be Aina. Okay, again, again. Min Aina is two words. Min Aina is two words. Where from? Where are you from? Min Aina Anta. I'm asking for just one word. Where? Secondly, you wouldn't say Min Aina if you want to ask about somebody's whereabouts. You would say Min Aina if you want to ask where somebody is from. Two, two different things altogether. Where are you from is different from where is Muhammad. Okay, so min aina is wrong. Ma huwa is definitely wrong because huwa, number one, is not used for, uh, sorry, uh, ma is not used for for asking where something is. Ma is used to ask about something. We've just done, that's the previous question that we asked. Okay, aina or min? No, min, again, min is not an interrogative word. Please, min is a, prepo is a, pre a preposition. We'll cover that inshallah. Min is a preposition, we'll talk about that. Okay? It means from. Okay? Aina. Okay, alhamdulillah, for the most part, answers are great. Um, I'm getting a lot of insight here on some of the misconceptions that you have, which is great. Definitely going to help me when I start preparing for the exams, writing the exams. Okay? Uh, which, that is Tifham. Would you use if you want to know about some things whereabouts? Not someone, something. Okay. Which word would you use if you want to know about some things whereabouts? Not someone, something. Okay. Okay. The answer start trickling in. Okay, so we have some of the answers. Aina. Wayne. Wayne is... Uh, <laughs> Wayne is... Uh, it's uh, it's not Fusha. It's basically Lahja. Wayne. Wayne. It's, la, it's Lahja. We're just doing Fusha here. Somebody said Hal. No. Aina. Ma. Okay, so this basically... Those of you that said Hal and Ma. This was a trick question. Okay, there is no difference asking about something's whereabouts or someone's whereabouts. Both of them we use Aina. Aina Muhammad. Ain al mi'taf. Ain khalid. Ain al nadara. Same thing. Okay? So this was kind of like a trick question. Giving you the impression that there's a different word when we ask about inanimate object. But that's not the case. It's the same thing. Okay? So some of you fell for that. Okay, another one. Uh, which interrogative word would you use if you want to double check regarding someone? As in, what we mean by double check is, you know something, you're not sure. You want to ask, is, you know, as opposed to asking an open-ended question, there's a closed-ended question, right? You're just looking for a yes or no answer regarding someone, okay? Regarding someone. A closed-ended answer, you're looking for a yes or no answer. What would you say? As in, you have a, an answer, but you're not sure if it's correct. You would say, hell, naam, hell. You can also say a, which um, we haven't covered yet, but it's one of the first things they covered in the Medina book. But yeah, al and hal mean the same thing essentially. Okay? Uh, so you would say hal. So, hal anta Pakistani? Are you Pakistani? Hal anta Misri? Okay? And so on and so forth. So, uh, you wouldn't say uh, that. No. Again, one word there, brothers and sisters. I don't want two words. Ahada is two words. You have the a and the hada. No, I'm sticking to one word. I'm asking about one word and one word only. Um, another one, I think is the final one. Uh, which adat istifham would you use if you want to double check regarding something? Regarding something. So again, it's a closed-ended question. But instead of someone, it's something. Okay, which word would you use? Again, you're looking for a yes or no answer. You're like, 
is this that is this like this or is this whatever okay is this y is this x you want to ask you're looking for a yes or no okay yep time's up hell most of you said hell uh, hell ma no ma is open-ended if you say to someone or so if you're asking about something and you say ma hadha, what is this you're gonna get whatever answer okay and you would only ask that kind of question if you have no idea ma hadha, what is this and then he would say to you hadha kitab hadha qalam he wouldn't say to you na'am or la. He wouldn't say if you say to someone ma hadha, he wouldn't say to you na'am hadha kitab. No, that's wrong. So the closed-ended question is by way of hell. Again, another trick question because there's no difference between hell when it comes to something or someone. The one word or the two words that differentiate so far when it comes to inanimate objects or human beings or, or persons or animate uh, human, uh, yani humans, I wouldn't say animate, I would say humans, okay, because in Arabic, animals go with objects, okay, so we have the humans, we have the non-humans, okay, so for humans, you would say men, non-humans, you would say ma, that's the only distinction we've learned so far, okay, hal goes for both, a goes for both, aina goes for both, okay, so that's one takeaway you can take from today's uh, a quick recap so um, we're done with that okay um, uh, Allah yainak <laughs> someone's reporting for jury duty may Allah make it easy for you bro okay uh, so that was a quick recap um, any questions anything someone wants to add to it how do you think you've done um do you need to brush up on some of those uh, interrogative words? Do let me know inshallah ta'ala in the, in the Zoom chat, okay? Okay. The next thing are these supplementary vocab. And basically, for this unit, we are completing counting up to 10. So it's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Last time, most of you said, you know, 1, 2, 5. I'm assuming you know 6 to 10 as well. But having said that, I think one of the students did... Uh, message me and say I didn't know it I would have loved if you've covered it so let's cover it no problem we'll cover the the, the numbers okay so um, I tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna write a number and you write the way it should be in Arabic okay time so open question how do we say the number six Arabic. Okay, there you go. Just write it in Arabic or type it in English, no problem. Okay, sitta. Okay, so we have sitta. Sitta. Okay, we're not going to spend much time on this. It's pretty easy. No, don't write the number. Don't write the number. I want you to write actually spell it out. Okay, uh, how about uh, seven? Okay, let's do moderator again so that people can't see each other's answers. Okay. How do we say seven or one minute? It's the same. Oh, I just stopped. Sorry about that. This was six. And let's duplicate it. So how do we say seven? Okay, mashallah. The answers are coming in quick now, mashallah. Uh, we have... Oh, no. I moved the screen. Sorry, I have to fix this. Okay, so yeah, everyone said Sabah. Ahsantum. Okay, how do we say? I don't want you to follow some kind of sequence. So, how do we say nine? Okay. 
boom tabs. Okay, so this seems to be easy for most of you. Okay, so let me just quickly go over the letter, the numbers. I'm going to count them from one to ten. Okay, واحد, اثنين, or اثنان, ثلاثة, أربعة, خمسة, ستة, سبعة, ثمانية, تسعة, عشرة. Okay, there we go. I'm going to add them. Or they are there actually in Quizlet as supplementary vocab. It might not have the audio now. I'm going to add the audio, inshallah, so you can also listen to how it's pronounced. And I might also create them as flashcards and post them on Google Classroom as well. For those of you that don't, don't know the numbers, you can um, revise them, inshallah. So that's easy. So those are the supplementary vocab. Now we're going to go on to related grammar concepts. Okay? And this is where I need your input. Okay? There's a slight issue. There's a slight issue, which is that this book, dear brothers and sisters, it's quite anti-grammar when it comes to level one, okay? And according to the training I've done with the al arabiyyat al jamia they're against the whole grammar focus, focusing on grammar, uh, breaking down the sentences and analyzing the sentences. They're against that completely. Instead, what they advocate is that you learn the template by itself, okay? You just learn how to replace each template with whatever words you need to. Okay, so when you have, for example, هذا محمد وهو مهندس They just want you to be able to replace مهندس with whatever occupation that you want and replace Muhammad with whatever name that you want. The only thing they want from you is that you manage to say هذا محمد and not هذه محمد and هذه فاطمة and not هذا فاطمة, okay? They don't want you to analyze the sentence and break it down and be like, this is that, and this is that, and this is the basic st structure of a sentence, this mubta, that, this is khabar, this fa'al, this fi'l. Mainly because the uh, purpose of the book is for conversational purposes, right? And they're not really training you to understand or comprehend uh, religious texts or, or, or anything beyond the scenarios within the book, okay? So for that reason, I'm already pushing it a little bit by spending some time on grammar. But um, I believe that there are a few very important concepts that you should know. The most important among them is basic Arabic sentence structure. Okay? How are Arabic sentences structured? Okay? And what does it consist of? Okay? I've got the material ready and I want to teach it. But with the allocation of that time that we've given so far which is two hours on saturday two hours on tuesday whereby on saturday we explained for an hour and we just about made it last week if you can remember we rushed it towards the end and today's explanation is meant to be 30 minutes maximum 40 minutes so that you have mostly time to do the workshops there's not enough time for me to explain those grammar concepts okay so question is what shall we do i don't think it's an option to go into grammar, okay, and, and spend more time on grammar and take away from the workshop time, because I believe these workshops are the most integral part of this course. That's where you get to practice the little that you learn. Um, but there is an option there on the table which I would like to suggest. I don't know how you feel about it, which is I can do a separate session, right? Just a one hour lecture once a week, just talking about grammar. And it's optional. Whoever wants to attend can attend. Whoever doesn't want to attend, you're not missing out on something that you desperately need for this conversational course. So I hope that makes sense, okay? Um, so that's why I'm going to stick. I'm just going to explain one related grammar concept today, which I'm not going to add on to that. I want to talk about basic Arabic structure. I've got a lot of exercises, skill building exercises based on that as well. But uh, like I said, oh, you have signed up for Arabic Baini Dek, which is a conversational Arabic course. So, I don't want to force it into this curriculum or into this course. So, shall we do something separate? Taban, free of charge. Uh, it's not, it's not going to be added money or whatever. I'm just thinking of arranging maybe once a week a one-hour lecture on grammar and then just giving you some skill-building exercise that you can work on in your free time as something that's supplementary. Purely supplementary. It's not something that you have to do. Um, so, what do you think? Let me know, give me your thoughts. As a matter of fact, don't write in the chat because I won't be able to uh, review it. Uh, tell me what you think over here. Uh, shall 
we do a dedicated grammar class once per week. Just write whatever you think, okay? Write whatever you think, inshallah. I don't know where we're gonna. F I don't know where we're going to fit it into, right? Um, but okay, those of you that say no, please explain why. Because uh, you know, again, like I said, it's not. It's optional, and it's not. It won't take away anything from your experience in this course. This course will continue the way it's meant to continue. We'll explain grammar concepts that are core to the actual series. Uh, but like I said, the way things are set up now, we can't force this into it, okay? We can't, so obviously, you won't be missing out. Uh, yes, it is possible to have it recorded if you can't make it in time. Yeah, you'll be recorded, definitely, inshallah. Uh, yes, would be great all the time. Like I said, it's recorded. If you can't attend, I'm not, look, I'm going to set the time according to my availability. Those of you that can make it can attend. Those that can't make it, I'll give you the recording, inshallah. Naam, bella, bella. Please, we really like like to know the structure of the sentences and to understand the concepts, even the names of terms, so it'd be helpful. Okay. But well, well, because we might not all be available during that time, and there's a lot to add in addition to all the other things. Okay, so that's a valid, uh, if you like, um, reason. But like I said, it's completely optional. Completely optional, and it will not take away anything from the way we're doing things now okay it's just something extra that i'm putting onto the table so that person that said no please revise your answer if that makes a difference if not you can stick to saying no i don't mind it yani. but uh, i just want to clear up that you don't it's optional you don't have to do it i'll probably set up a separate google classroom for it so that whatever assignments on it don't clog up the google classroom that you signed up for so yeah we won't all be on the same page for those who can attend and those who cannot no, you would be on the same page because, like I said, this course, the way it's set up, the way this course is set up, you don't need grammar in order to pass with flying colors. Whatever I'm going to teach in that separate class, it's not something that if you don't do it, you're going to miss out. Okay? It's just that it's going to improve your comprehension of texts that are outside this course, such as Hadith or Quran or what have you. It's going to improve your comprehension of texts that are outside this course. Okay? Yes, who once can attend, who wants they don't. Yani it's not it's not must, and it will also be recorded, inshallah. Okay, all right then. Mumtaz, okay then, inshallah, I'll revise those answers. In the workshops, there will be there a large discrepancy. No, there won't be. No, there will not be any discrepancy in the workshops, and I'll tell you why. Because the workshops are based on what we do in the general lecture. Okay, that's where you get to practice them. Okay. Let me put it this way. The workshop is about developing developing your productive skills, the way you express yourself. Okay? These grammar lessons are for developing your receptive skills, your comprehension of text. So do you see the difference? The grammar lessons will make you better understand text that you've never seen before. Okay? The workshops, they help you with whatever you have or whatever you already know that has went that went through the receptive stage, that's the first stage. The first stage is that you receive and you understand and you comprehend. Then you express. So first you need to understand the language before you can speak it. Okay? So the workshop is about whatever you've taken in class and you've understood, taking that to the next level whereby you can implement that. So in that in that way, if some student does the extra grammar classes, another student he doesn't. I still believe that there wouldn't be any discrepancy in the workshop as long as they both put in the same amount of work inside the workshop because they're basically working on the same concepts and just upgrading them to being productive. If you know what I mean. hope that makes sense, inshallah. Anyway, we'll stick there, inshallah. Can you just shorten the theory to add the grammar concepts in one class instead of two different classes? Um, I'll try my best. I'll try my best, but... Um, I try, the first lesson that we have, I don't want to add related grammar skills that haven't been covered by the book when you're already struggling, maybe struggling with understanding the ones that the book came with. Okay, so that's why. 
Okay, so one of the things, so we might decrease the grammar, yani we might, we will see how we can do that, inshallah. Anyway, today's grammar concept, really quickly, is al mudaf wal mudaf ilayh. Okay, al mudaf wal mudaf ilayh is basically when you ascribe something to someone, or even someone to someone. So you have two words, okay? And these two words, you want to establish a relationship between the two words. Okay, now that relationship, it doesn't have to be a relationship of belonging, yes? But it's just that you're establishing that relationship, that these two things are related. Okay, that's where we use this structure called Al-Mudaf Al-Mudaf Ilayh. And it's extremely important, and you'll find it everywhere, and you've already seen it so far in Unit 1 and Unit 2, it's all over the place. Okay, let me give you an example. An example that all of you are familiar with. Okay, Rasulullah. Okay, Rasulullah. So we have Rasul, which means messenger, and we have Allah. Okay, now we're establishing the relationship between these two words such that we're saying the messenger of Allah. Okay, so the mudaf mudaf ilay is basically a way of taking a word. Yes, and specifying it. Because Rasul is very general. The word Rasul is very general messenger. Okay, if I send someone with a message, yes, to go and convey it to someone else, maybe whatever way it is, then that person, he's my messenger. Okay? Sah? So when we say Rasul, that's very general. But when we're talking about our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we say Rasulullah, the Prophet of Allah. Now this is a very specific kind of messengership. Do you understand? Okay, so this is mudaf mudaf ilay. You have something general, very word that's proper general. There's general sorry, you have a, a word that is uh, very general if you like. And then you ascribe it to someone or something to specify it. Okay, so if I say to you for example, Nawinil kitab or Atinil kitab, give me the book. Or give me a book. أعطني كتابا. And then you think to yourself, what book? And then you say to me, أي كتاب? Which book? And then I say to you, كتاب الله. Allah's book. Now you know exactly which book I'm talking about. Okay? The book of Allah. Or Allah's book. Not any book. كتاب الله. Okay? So this is the structure of mudaf mudaf ilay. And we use it in our speech all of the time. Okay? Within this unit that we're doing now, one of the words that we had was where they said, Hada Adanul Fajr. What did it say? Hada Adanul Fajr. Okay? So, Adan, yes, is what? Is something general. How many Adans are there in a day? Five different Adans. Okay? But when we say Adhan al-Fajr, we know exactly which Adhan we're talking about. The Adhan al-Fajr. Okay, and, and the reason I'm focusing on this point when it comes to Mudaf, Mudaf ilay, I know a lot of people, they explain it by saying the possessed and the possessor or whatever, or the associated. I want to really focus on the fact that we have a general word that is made specific. You have to focus on this because this is what makes Mudaf, Mudaf, that's this what gives Mudaf, Mudaf ilay all of its attributes which we're going to cover in the future. Okay? That it's now a specific noun. Whereas Adhan is general, unspecified, indefinite. Adhanun. Adhanul Fajr is something very specific. Is that clear? Are there any questions regarding that? Post it in the, in the chat, inshallah. So the important thing here that you have to note is that, and this is the most important thing, صح? which is, the structure or the order is different in English and Arabic. So remember this, this is where people go wrong. Okay? This is where people, people go wrong. We have... Uh, for example, we have, um, let's say, Kitabullah, Allah's book. Would you try to use words they are all familiar with? Okay. How would we translate this in English? We wouldn't say, Book Allah. No, we say, Allah's book. So it's kind of like opposite. Okay, in English we mentioned the noun is associated to first and then the thing that's being associated okay uh, obviously we could also say the book of Allah but that's less frequently used than the uh, the apostrophe with the S okay Allah his book Allah's book okay this is the more oftenly used okay so just remember that that the order is different 
Remember this. And why do I say this? Because when I say Kitabullah, what am I talking about? Am I talking about the book or I'm talking about Allah? I'm talking about the book. The book is the subject. That's the important thing. The book is the subject. Okay? All of this, what I'm saying now, it might not make that much sense. But when you start practicing, that's when you're going to remember these things. Inshallah. Because most of the mistakes that students make, it goes back to these couple of things. Okay? One last thing I'd love to add before we wrap up is that al mudaf al mudaf ilayh Yes, it can be the mudaf ilayh, the thing, the second word, if you like. Okay, in English would be the first. It can be a noun or it could be a ism mudmar. It could be a pronoun. Okay, and the pronoun is the one that we've been doing this whole unit. This whole unit was about mudaf mudaf ilayh using the pronoun. So the whole chapter two point two, where it talks about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's family tree, all of that is mudaf ilayh. هذا عمه العباس وهذا عمه حمزة وهذا ابنته فاطمة وهذا ابنه القاسم all of this is مضاف مضاف إليه all of it so give me an example give me an example ابنه القاسم his son قاسم صح ابنه القاسم his son قاسم okay so his son هذا ابنه and this is his son قاسم ابنه this is the مضاف مضاف إليه over here ابنه Okay, so we have the Ibn and we have the Hu. This Hu, which stands for Hua, means Ibn Hua, his son. Ibn Hua, his son. Opposite, obviously, like I said to you, opposite in, 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 in English. We don't say son, his, his son. In the Arabic, it's Ibn Hu. So don't say Hua Ibn. And some of you are going to be talking like this. Some of you will be like, Hada um, Allah Kitab. La not Allah Kitab, Allah Hadik. Hada Kitab Allah. I know in English it's Allah's book, but you can't use that structure. You can't say Allah kitab. You have to say kitabullah. And this is the mistakes people make. Okay, even people that speak Arabic, when they want to learn English, they make the same mistake. Okay, they say something like, for example, um, this is son my. Okay, this is son my. It means this is my son. Because that's how his language is structured. Yes, this is car my. Yes, this is my car. Because that's how his language is structured. And we as English speakers, we make the same thing when we're learning Arabic. Okay? So this, like I said, the mudaf mudaf ilay, you could have two nouns, or you could have a noun and a pronoun. Okay, so ibnu al qasim. So this, I can also say instead of ibnu al qasim, what can I say? Ibnu Muhammadin. Ibnu Muhammadin al qasim. So to give you an example here, right? My name is Muhammad, right? So my name is Muhammad. Okay, but I also go by Ibn Abdul Wali. They're both the same thing. The son of Abdul Wali. Or Abdul Wali's son. Muhammad ibn Abdul Wali. Okay. So, um, I can say for example, هذا, So if someone were talking to my, was uh, introducing me, yes, um, by saying that I'm my father's son, he would say, هذا ابنه Muhammad. ابنه Muhammad. So when we say Ibnuhu Muhammad, the who at the end refers back to who? Refers to Abdul Wali. Ibnuhu, yani Abdul Wali. Ibnuhu, his son, Muhammad. Okay? Inshallah, all of this will make sense once we start practicing with it. Are there any questions before we start the uh, workshops? So, to give you a quick. Please, you can post any questions that you have on. In the chat. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start the workshops now, inshallah. And just to show you what we have in store for you today, um, I was going to do a quizzes or a quizlet competition, but we're going to leave that for another time. Um, so the workshop today, we're going to do three things, inshallah. Uh, and on the sister side as well, teachers are going to do this with you. We have some reading fluency whereby you're going to read the dialogue, really, really important. We need to know. Look, look, dear brothers and sisters, if you can't read the dialogue fluently, you won't speak fluently. Take that as a fact. If you can't read it fluently, you can't speak it fluently. So the first step towards speaking Arabic fluently is being able to read the dialogue fluently. If when you're reading the dialogue, you're saying, G -g -g -g, you can't really pronounce these words, how are you going to pronounce them? Yes, in a live setting when you're speaking to someone. It's not possible. So first thing in the workshop, you're going to read the dialogue. And I expect you to have practiced reading it a lot 
as part of the pre-unit assignment. So these pre-unit assignments, it's all about making sure you know how to read fluently before the class even starts. That's one thing. Uh, another thing as well, the teacher is going to do with you is some pronunciation practice as well. Because specifically this week, we might not have done it last week, but this week we're covering the Ain and the Hamza. One of the Achilles heels of English speakers. Okay, one of their biggest problems. Okay, so, and I gave you the example last time between Mubtada and, and, and Mubtadi and, and that, that, that story, little story. Uh, so, today you're going to practice pronouncing the Ain and the Hamza. So the teacher is going to show you some slides whereby... You have two words, minimal pairs, that are completely the same apart from the Ayn or the Hamza. Sometimes at the beginning of the word, sometimes in the middle of the word, sometimes at the end of the word. And you are going to read those two words right next to each other so that you can see the contrast for yourself. Okay? And the teacher will assess you on that and she'll also take notes, and I'll also take notes for the brothers, on how difficult you find these sounds so that we can help you master them inshallah ta'ala going forward. Beyond that, those are the pronunciation, those are what we call the core skill building. So obviously, as you know, the workshop is two parts. We have the first part with one teacher, the next part with another teacher. So the first part, for those of you uh, that are on group one, you're going to be focusing on the core skills. The second part, you're going to be focusing on your expressive skills, the speaking. And one of the exercises you're going to do is you're going to be presented with a vocabulary list, vocabulary list. And you are going to make your own sentences. I don't care what the sentence is. You can come up with whatever you like. It can be wrong in terms of meaning as long as it's grammatically correct. As long as it's grammatically correct. Okay? Um, so, the meaning, that's a different story. They say grammar and meaning, they're not directly connected. So something can be grammatically right, but the meaning could be wrong. You can say, for example, uh, the ball kicked Muhammad. So I, that's grammatically correct, but it's, the meaning is messed up. So I don't care about the meaning, right? But as long as whatever the way you're using your sentences is grammatically correct. So you're going to have this list of vocabulary, if you like. And I've done you a little favor by categorizing the words. Okay? So we have places within the house, like ghurfa, hammam, musalla, masjid, places inside and outside the house. You have verbs. We've done three this week. Yusalli, yaqra, yatawadda. You have occupations, mudarris, talib, tabib, muhandis, muallima. We have relation, relation is in relationship to you or relationship to someone else. Yes, akhi, ukhti, sadiqi, jaddati, jaddi, walidati. Or you can also relate it to someone else. You can say akhuhu, ukhtuhu, sadiqu, whatever. Sadiquka, sadiquki is up to you the way you use the pronouns. But these are relations. Then you have interrogative words used for asking questions and then you have objects. These are the objects we've done this term, uh, this this unit. So you can look, teacher's going to show you this, and I'm going to show you this list, this vocabulary list, and all that's upon you is to come up with a sentence that makes sense, that's grammatically correct, okay? That's one exercise. The other exercise is the speaking prompts, like we've done last time. Teacher's going to show you these speaking prompts, and these are the prompts for this week. Introduce family members and their occupations. For example, هذا أخي هو مهندس. Introduce another person's family member and occupations, which is the exact same, except that you're going to be using a different pronoun. First you said, هذا أخي. Now you're going to say, هذا أخوه. هذا صديقه. هذا عمه. هذا عمه عبد الله. Okay, هذا عمه عبد الله. وهو مدرس. Okay, so you're going to introduce someone else's family. Okay. Or you're going to ask about another person's family member. This is pretty straightforward. من هذا or من هذه. Or you're going to ask about something's whereabouts. Ain al-kitab, ain al-mi'taf, ain al-surah, whatever object you can think of. Even if it's outside this vocabulary list, from your own list, I don't mind as long as it's correct. Ain al-sayyara, it's up to you. And you're going to ask about someone's whereabouts, which is also ain. Ain Muhammad, ain Khalid, ain Abdullah. These are the speaking prompts for this week. Teacher will show you them on the screen. You're going to have two minutes to make some kind of conversation with your classmate. And... If you get stuck, teacher will help you, inshallah, uh, to get you unstuck. And then finally, we have uh, some other exercises as well, which is this uh, widget, which we call randomness. And basically, you're going to be given a name, a place, and you come up with the verb yourself. Okay, so teacher is going to click spin over here, and you're going to be presented with some random words. Okay, so here we have Khalil. Musalla, and you need to come up with the verb that is suitable. So you could say, for example, Khalilun 
في المصلى يقرأ القرآن أوكي أور خليل يصلي في المصلى whatever you want أوكي so that's another one that you are going to do um, and another one that is similar to this as well which is slightly different is that you're going to be presented with a, a relationship and a name of a person and an occupation okay and then you need to come up with whatever sentence you can come up with okay it can be according to the uh, templates within the book or you can do your own way as long as it's correct so we have am we have umar and come up with the occupation okay هذا عمي عمر وهو مدرس or you can say هذا عمه عمر وهو مدرس okay the important thing is that you don't say هذه عمه or that you say هذا عمها that's the important thing Umar tells you it has to be masculine. So you might spin it again and you might end up with a female name. Know that you need to change something now. You can't say Ammuhu. So here we have, for example, we got male name again and we got Amma. This is obviously incorrect. Okay? Uh, you need to pick up on that as well when this happens. Okay? Taib. Any questions before we start the workshops? When connecting the words that belong together, will it always have the harakat dhamma to connect them? No, I'm not sure really. Um, what you mean by that? Is there a general rule or is it dependent on each word? Sorry, I missed the context for that question. How do we know what the harakat is supposed to be before the dhamir? For example, oh yeah, no that one, the harakat before the dhamir is that's what you learn in grammar, called the arab. Araf? It's called the Arab. Araf? Lahadabis? Okay, then everyone, inshallah, I'm going to send the link to the workshops in the channels. I'll see you in a moment, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay?